or wrong. You're wrong about the draft. Ravens sign Wagner and draft Sauce at 14. If Sauce is gone, then the Ravens will trade out of the 14th pick. There is no wide receiver pick if they are not solid with the offensive line and free agency. The Ravens are all about the offensive line and the defense to deal with Watkins and Burrow. That's a lock. Well, first, before you're going to come to me and try to correct me and question from subscribers, who is Watkins? There is no quarterback in the AFC North whose last name is Watkins. So it's actually you that's wrong, my friend. Uh, and don't forget about Mr. Trubisky. But first, let me just back up a little earlier in your question slash comment. You said that there is no wide receiver pick if they are not solid with the offensive line and free agency. And you mentioned pick number 14, and you said if it's not sauce, then the Ravens will trade out of the 14th pick. Is the 14th pick, because it sounds like you're just talking about the first round. I said that the Ravens are drafting a wide receiver in the first one, two, three rounds. Not just the first. So before you come try to correct me, Make sure you have all your facts in line, my friend. Now, without further ado, let's get into this episode of NFL Questions from Soaps. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. So YouTube team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if you don't want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can stay exactly where you are. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some great questions like every single time because y'all don't ever fail. Let's get it. <laughs> Speaking of wide receivers, uh, first question. Well, next question. Second question came from my boy, Stefan. He said, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? He said, hopefully the fam is doing well. Oh, they're doing great. They're doing great. But anyway, do you think we will go after A.J. Green? Let me know your thoughts. No, I don't think the Ravens will go after A.J. Green at all. I don't envision any scenario where they go after A.J. Green. Um, yeah, I just don't. Uh, I think I think they would actually they would go for Julio before they went for uh, for A.J. Green. Um, A.J. Green would ah uh, man, I'm almost expecting a retirement announcement any day now from A.J. Green. Uh, just to be straight up, um, he's obviously been a Ravens killer. Well, he had been for a long time. Uh, but then injuries just start catching up, and then it just it looked like his heart just wasn't. Y'all remember the game, that Bengals game, where A.J. Green was just there, and um, I think it was like an overthrown pass or something. He just watched it. Uh, and then I think Marcus Peters picked it off. Somebody picked it off, and then he was just, he, he was not into it at all. Uh, but then he did look better with the Cardinals. It was a fresh start and whatnot with the Cardinals, but... Yeah, I don't think the Ravens will sign A.J. Green at all. Next question came from my boy Joey. He said, ain't Ravens. So it seems a lot of Ravens fans still want offensive coordinator Giro out and have been asking for him to be out. But, hey, hey big butt coming up here. Uh, I remember in the Joe Flacco years, almost every year we had a new offensive coordinator. Do you think the Ravens saw that that was not a good thing and are now trying to right their wrongs? I'm sure it was rough for Flacco to have to work with a different offensive coordinator every year. And they noticed it and they don't want that for Lamar Jackson. I think it's actually a bit deeper than that, my friend. Um, reason being because Raven, a lot of Ravens fans have complained about Greg Roman. For a while now, too. It's been a thing. You know how it goes. Uh, but a lot of Ravens fans also complained about Mark Tressman. A lot of Ravens fans also complained about uh, Marty Morningweg. Uh, a lot of Ravens fans complained about Jim Caldwell, Cam Cameron, and the list goes on. But there has been one common denominator. If you don't know what that common denominator is, I'll let you figure it out. Take some time to think about it. But... The offensive coordinator complaints 
they are, they're probably going to continue with whoever's offensive coordinator next. So just something to think about. But anyway, he said, thanks for all your videos, bro. A lot of times, I don't even check the Ravens app or ESPN app for Ravens news anymore. I just go to YouTube and click on your channel for news. Keep it up. I appreciate that, Joey. Thank you, man. Next questions came from my boy, BB. He said, what are the Ravens going to do if JK and Gus aren't ready? Should Ravens take a different approach this offseason and solidify a top shelf running back like a Dalvin Cook? Woo-hoo! That would be nice, but no. Then, no. Um, with I think the biggest thing with Ravens at running back, um, if like you stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready, of course. You just want somebody that's gonna be and have been familiar with your system just in case those guys aren't fully ready to go. Now I do anticipate both of them being ready, but still you gotta stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready, right? Um, so you got Devontae Freeman, you could bring him back, you got Tyson Williams, you could actually use him for once. Um, so you have some options. Then, of course, you could draft a guy late. You could sign an undrafted free agent running back. Um, so you, you're going to have your options. You're certainly going to have your options. But as far as them getting a high priced running back like a Dalvin Cook, I don't see that. happening. That'd be nice. It'd be a nice little luxury. But I just don't see that happening. The same way I, I would not see them trading for Saquon Barkley. Uh, it just it's not something that they, they would do um, because they have so many other options and so many other cheaper options you know ravens the, the fiscal ravens they, they don't play about that money anyway he said i'm worried because this run heavy style won't work with a nate mccrary a tyson williams a Devonte freeman or any of what we saw last season thanks for the positive everyday updates hashtag team keep it clean appreciate that um also he mentioned he mentioned two of the running backs that i mentioned too <laughs> but yeah no i just i really do think that um they, they just need to have guys there that are familiar with the system early on. So if something does happen, if J.K. or Gus or Justice ain't ready, if somebody just not ready to full go, then you'll have somebody else who's familiar and they can step in and hopefully uh, end up showing up and showing out. Uh, he also said, uh, you said something a couple of days ago about Moses being the best free agent signing on this offensive line. Well, he was the, the only free agent signing on the offensive line. Um, so... That's that's it. it. There's nothing to compare him to. Um, he said, bro, I hope you are wrong. All in has to be the mindset for the offense. Lamar sees the patterns. And if Ravens don't change this cultural mediocrity, Lamar will leave. I wouldn't blame him if he did. Hashtag evolve. Mm. Well, that's why I think Lamar ain't signed yet. Yeah, Y'all already know my opinion on that. I don't think he's signing this offseason. Um, and I think he just really wants to see a change in the Ravens, a change to their ways, a change to their habits, and a change to their approach um, before he moves forward. So we'll see how that ends up. Next question came from my boy Aaron Z. He said, what's up, big fan of the Viz? Keep up the good work. Hey, appreciate you, Aaron. Uh, as you know, as of today, Lamar still has not signed the extension. I know he still has time to sign it. But do you think we will work out a deal with Lamar before the season starts? Oh, timing is everything. We just talked about that in the previous question. But no, I don't. Uh, and do you think the Ravens are going to offer him Allen Watson like type deals? Appreciate it and hope you have a great day. Now, those two deals, they are very different from each other because Josh Allen, he got a lot of guaranteed money, but it ain't fully guaranteed. Deshaun Watson, he got it all. It's all guaranteed to be paid to him no matter what. And the Browns, they, they thought they were slick. They thought they were slick because the Browns, the way that they structured his contract this year with his um with his salary being one million dollars. Oh, they oh they were slick. Oh, football's a nasty business, though. They structured it so if he does get suspended, say for instance, worst case scenario, he even got suspended for the whole year. Then his salary, boom, he will lose that salary. But he would only lose a million dollars. His deal was what, 250 mil? Something like that. It's 250 mil guaranteed. So he would get like 249. Million guarantee. So like these brown boy, they slick, boy. They slick. Ooh, they they slick. They slick. Um, but anyway, he uh so yeah, Lamar's looking at those deals. Like he Lamar passed the Josh Allen deal. That's old news. That that's old. Lamar he ain't worried about that. No, no. He is looking at Deshaun Watson and looking at that like, oh, 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 oh that's where that's where the floor is now. Okay, yeah, I'm with it. Next question came from my guy, Alex. He said, hey, how's it going? My guy, thanks for all the coverage and consistent updates you do for our Ravens. No, I appreciate y'all even watching them. Oh, he said, it really helps to keep some of us in the loop with what's going on with the teams, uh, myself included. 
Uh, my question or questions for you today is about Tyus Bowser. I have been a big fan of this guy uh, and in his corner since we drafted him. From him going from almost being a potential draft bust to now an important part of our team's defense. I'm still one of his biggest fans. A lot of people don't know who he is, and even Ravens fans don't understand why I bought his jersey, but it's because I really like the guy as a player, and he seems to be an overall cool dude when you hear him talking in interviews. But regardless of any of that or how much I like him, part of me feels like he may never live up to his full potential, and my expectations of him would be Pro Bowl caliber. He is a good player for our defense, but do you think he has potential to ever be a pro bowler in this league? Um, I, I think so. Now, if you would have said he may not ever live up to his full potential under the previous scheme, uh, okay, yeah, I can see how you could say that. But now we have an opportunity to see him uh, under Mike McDonald's scheme. And with Mike McDonald, apparently he really uses his pass rushes as pass rushes and lets them go hunt. So let's see when, when Tyus Bowser does get healthy, uh, if Mike McDonald really lets him go hunt. Uh, he said, if not, do you think at some point, maybe in the last year of his contract, he could become good, a good trade bait for another team that needs a linebacker? What do you think the future holds for Ty Tyus Bowser in Baltimore? That's, um, that's, that's a good question. And, um, I think it's to be determined because, yeah, Tyus Bowser, it, he started off like just he wasn't really active like that. It wasn't out there much. Then when he got out there, I remember he got like an interception against the Browns, I think, or was it Pittsburgh? I forgot which one of those teams it was. And it was like, oh, there goes Tyus Bowser. Okay, he's showing up now. Because um, there was rumors that he just wasn't getting a playbook early on. He just didn't get it. It wasn't clicking for him. Um, but now... He And then even last season, like last season for him, it started off a little bit slow, then it got better and better and better and better. And then he started improving as the season went along. But then uh, just that's that's so annoying for how he went out, because it's like the last game of the season on, on top of on top of all of that. The Ravens lost and he lost probably the beginning of next season because he got injured. Um, so it was like, man, and then he, on top of that, even if Ravens would have won, they still would end up losing because they wouldn't have made the playoffs. Uh, so it, it, it was just a tough break for him. I felt so bad for him. So that's like, that sets him back going into next season. But I think, um, I think it's, it's tough to say now the injury just messed a lot of stuff up because he had really good momentum, uh, going in to, uh, going into this upcoming season. But now that momentum is kind of like. It's, it's just shot. It's shot a little bit. It, it, it all just depends on his bounce back game, really. That's the biggest thing for him, his bounce back game. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be ready in time for the beginning of the season. Then uh, it, when he does finally come back, how active will he be? Um, will somebody establish himself as that Sam linebacker, as the like, all right, I'm holding it down, Tyus Bowles, I'm holding it down. Will there be somebody who's like, all right, I'm holding it down till you get back? Or will it be somebody where it's like, all right, I'm holding it down, and this is my spot now? That that could change a lot with what happens. So it's it's still like super up in the air. Uh, he also said, um, "I'm really curious what you uh, what you think about this guy because nobody really mentions him very much. And I know they I know they are two different types of linebackers in different positions, but I'm wondering how much an addition of a Bobby Wagner would help the progression of a Tyus Bowser." Um, so with that part, uh, Bobby Wagner would, I think he could allow the Ravens to just really have, um, a solid, well, not even solid, really good inside linebacker to where they don't have to move guys around as much. Like having a Bobby Wagner will allow other guys to really play their positions. Like, uh, I, th I think there was some time last year, if it wasn't last year, then it was the year before last year, where they had, uh, Tyus Bowser play a little bit of inside linebacker. But if they had Bobby Wagner there, then it could be Bobby Wagner and Patrick Queen and Tyus Bowser. He could stay at outside linebacker. So I think Bobby would just allow them to just have guys play their roles and just keep their roles and not have to do all this and all that and then start get the overthinking and all that stuff. So Bobby Wagner would make everybody's job easier. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Justin. He said, hello, my brother at work watching your videos once again. I do office work, so it doesn't mess me up listening. Oh, okay. You sure? Now, because I know, I told y'all for me, if I'm working on something, if I'm writing something, even typing something, I cannot listen to something and type at the same time because I will start typing what I'm either thinking or what I'm listening to. And it just, it's a bad situation for me. Anyway, 
He said, uh, I was thinking, man, why has Lamar stopped running as much? Well, just to start off from that, I, I think he was hurt for a majority of last year. Um, even before the whole ankle injury or bone bruise, whatever it was, I think he was hurt before that because he looked slower. He looked significantly slower. He was not as quick as he once was. He was off, and you could see it. He was off. Um, and I think another reason, too, why he may not run as much, because I think with a lot of times when, with Lamar, with the Ravens, they let that outside noise that they hear, they let it creep in. They, they've been doing it since 2018, since Lamar's rookie. They let it creep in, and you can tell by their play calls, by his play style, they, by different things that he would do, different things that they would, they let it creep in. And with that, they let it affect the way that they do things. So I think that was a big part of it, too. As far as last year, I think a lot of it was prove it ball. Like, let me prove to these people that I can throw. Let me show the world. that. And this happened last year, too, in 2020. It happened last season, too, where we would be watching. We'd be like, oh, Lamar, oh, it's a lane right there, Lamar. Take off, take off, take off. And he would be sitting there holding the ball, holding, 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 and he would throw it. So I think a lot of it is prove it ball, um, but he was also hurt. Anyway, he said, I swear he has so many open holes like back in the MVP season, but I think in the back of his head he's thinking about the haters saying he cannot throw. This is why I got I to gotta finish reading before I start talking because a lot of times we, we be on the same page. That's, that's why I love y'all so much. But anyway, he said, do you think this has had an impact on him trying to prove, trying to prove them wrong? <laughs> See, we were just talking about prove it ball. It's, it's, it's sometimes like sometimes it's crazy like how this happens man sometimes it's, it's it's really crazy but that's how i know that again a lot of us be on the same page it's crazy how much this happens where we'll be reading a question and we read the first part of it then we start answering it then y'all will say the same thing in the next part of the question so anyway he said we know he can throw and he knows he can throw but the run game has gotten weaker this year maybe from from a lack of an offensive line or even the fact that Villanueva was even on the team who the pettiness creep through um I really don't like him as you can tell uh do you think this is going to change this season I know he's scared of injuries but he is a signature scrambling quarterback I don't think Lamar's scared of injuries I don't think Lamar even really worried about injuries it ain't like he even he, he don't play the game reckless you know, he, I mean, and he ain't even been like the bone bruise was his first like real injury. I remember um, his, was it his rookie year where we had RG3? I think it was his rookie year. But yeah, because RG3, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was, yeah, 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 it was RG3. It was Flacco, RG3, and Lamar. Um, the game against the Chiefs, his rookie year. Um, he, it was in overtime, I think. Yeah, in overtime. He had like some little super minor injury, and that was the first one. It was super minor, only took him out a couple plays, but those were the like the game tying or game winning drives. Uh, and RG3 was in there, and that, and so RG3 had to step in at the very end of the game. He threw the Willie Sneed on the fourth down, should have been pass interference, but it is what it is. Um, and that just, yeah, that ended that game. But my point in saying that. I'm over here going down memory lane. My point in saying all that was that that was Lamar. He had got hurt, but it was, again, super quick. Uh, and there have been other times when Lamar, he's came out of a game for like a little bit. Then he went right back in. Um, so this bone bruise was the first significant injury that really kept him out. Um, that's why I was so scared, like with the Ravens, that they were going to force him out there. I remember that one practice. Y'all remember seeing the videos of him at that one practice where he was like limping and stuff. And how, I was like, no, please, Ravens, do not do this. Don't do it, please. Don't rush him back. And I'm so glad that they didn't. Um, but I don't think he's worried about injuries. Long story short, short. Anyway, he said, also, please tell me how to become a patron for Team Keep It Clean. I would love to do these videos like you do. All I do is research the Ravens. Keep it easy, my brother. I'll be in touch. Appreciate it. Oh, he said, sorry for the book. <laughs> Trust me, that, that was not no book. We, we have gotten a lot of books over the years, which I ain't got no problem with. But trust me, this was not even close to being a book. But team, keep it clean. I love y'all. As far as being a patron, we said at the beginning of every question from subscriber video, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving That's it. That's it. Simple as that. Um, but I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for watching this episode of Question from Subscribers. 
And we out.